Hi, I'm Jack Berizzini, and you're listening to The Secrets of Stargate, where we talk about the hidden meanings and deeper layers found in the Stargate movies, TV series, and more. And joining me today are Lisa Jones. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Jack. And Victor Lambs. Hey, Victor. Hi, Jack. So yeah, this is a very special episode because it is 111, and it's uh, far too few podcast episodes to have recorded. So <laughs> we need to do the, I don't have a ring to disappear with, but you get the idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of Tolkien, if you want to check out the SQPN podcast about that, you can look up the Secrets of Middle Earth. Awesome. Today we are, uh, we're going to talk about the third episode of season six, Descent. After detecting a Hatak warship near Earth, SG-1 travels to the ship and boards it. They find that it is unmanned and that the self-destruct has been disabled. They explore the ship, but then are then ambushed by Jaffa. Jacob Carter is shot and then taken hostage. While the rest of SG-1 is forced to flee, the Hatak crashes into the ocean with Sam, Jacob, and Jack on board. Teal'c and Jonas mount a rescue mission in a submarine. They discover that Thor's consciousness has been uploaded into the computer and that he was the one who stopped the ship's self-destruction. Sam is able to download Thor onto a USB drive so that the Asgard can recreate a new clone of him. The team races against time to escape the submerged ship before it explodes, and Jonas ends up coming to the rescue of Jack and Sam. So, Jonas Quinn for the win. (laughs) What are your thoughts on this episode, Lisa? Uh, I like it. I think season six starts out strong. I like that, um, you know, it starts out with with Jack not really giving Jonas anything to do. And Jonas has got his smile and my first time this and my first time that. And by the <laughs> end of the episode, he Jack acknowledges him as a full-fledged member of SG-1. And so I like that they uh, did it right off the bat here in, in, the, in the season. And um, so many favorites. I mean, Selmak, Jacob, Major Davis, but I really love the scene of Tilk and um, Jonas having their little alien heart to heart and yes. infused humor. That was that was a really sweet spot. So uh, I like it. I like this episode. I thought it was really good. My kids were watching it with me and they kept going, there's replicators, right? There's going to be replicators. <laughs> I'm like, wrong episode. <laughs> no replicators. <laughs> but you just weren't sure. So I, I like that everything went wrong and it was different than usual. Mm. Are you suggesting an alien conspiracy? Yes. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> what about you, Victor? Yeah, I'm not going to dissent from that opinion. I thought it was a <laughs> descent episode. Um, good use of misdirection to throw you off descent. And if I had to watch it again, I would pay up to 50 cents to do so. <laughs> There no, it's a great it's a great episode. This is one of my favorites. Um I love the as you mentioned I love the the uh Jonas and Teal'c dynamic. I think it's a better dynamic than, you know, um Daniel Jackson and Teal'c have had in in many a seasons. Uh there's so much really good stuff here. The the underwater photography is is great. Uh Corin Nimick does really well in his uh underwater scenes. Um, I do not look good when I'm wet, so I can appreciate when <laughs> other people do. <laughs> and yeah, there's there's a lot going on here. It's it's uh, like I said, one of my one of my favorite episodes. Great, uh, you know, disaster movie vibe yeah. there. Basically, a uh, Poseidon adventure, but on a hotel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, which is always a good thing. Yeah, I love I love his enthusiasm, like you were saying, Lisa. He's just so excited to be in space and he's excited to be in the death glider at the end yeah. and just all that stuff. And that's it's funny to juxtapose that against everyone else because it's old hat to them at this point. But mm-hmm. I like that because I feel like if you've never been to space before, and especially if you came from a planet that was at like a nineteen thirties level of technology, that that would just be awe inspiring. So I love the energy that he brings to the team. Mm-hmm. yeah and uh i love he's it almost feels like teal is hazing him in that scene like a little bit yeah. of gentle yeah. roasting and doesn't break character at all so it's yeah it's it almost felt like christopher judge acting as teal like first or second season yeah you know like he was a little more stiff a little more you know alien a little more intense than he has been the last few years so i kind i liked that i liked i liked that they put them together and had that conversation yeah, it's like you had to you had to prove yourself to Jack too, right? No, I did not. 
Yeah, and they and they gave they gave Jonas something to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, he yeah. memorized all of the schematics or whatever. So yeah, you know, I mean, he he actually got to save the team, and it wasn't just you know I don't know. Oh look, another culture used whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and his his solution to saving the team wasn't just I'm going to go in guns a blazing and blow up something. He actually mm-hmm. had to like figure out the problem. So I liked that it was a like a nonviolent intelligent solution that he had to use rather than just shooting on the Jaffa. Yeah. <laughs> right. He had to solve the water temple puzzle or whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, underwater levels are the worst. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no bubbles of air bubbling up from the floor to like stick your head in and nope. Recharge your oxygen. We did get a, we got a couple red shirts on this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One at one at least, right? Or for you said, the one guy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Dr. my one of my kids going, Who is that? I'm like, it, it's really not important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was supposed to be it was supposed to be two red shirts. I did read that mm-hmm. um Major Davis is, was supposed to be played by another scientist. Because I'm watching this, I'm like, why is Major Davis here? Right. I mean, they make a they make a reference to it like when he shows up and, and Jack's like, Oh, something bad is gonna happen or something. But yeah. I'm like, why is Major Davis here? Because he doesn't go on like away missions. And then mm-hmm. um reading, I guess, the actor uh, Colin Cunningham kind of proposed Major Davis to be in this episode instead of generic scientist number two or whatever. He's like, I got a week. I'm free. I'm available. Hire me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you get more residuals. Right. Yeah. But it, it worked besides the initial, yeah. why is Major Davis there? It worked. Yeah. You know, it was kind of <laughs> nice to see a familiar face, which is just another no-name you yeah. know, scientist that doesn't get to last. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Friesen was the name of the yeah. the guy who got a little bit too curious. Although I do appreciate uh so the whole the whole lead up to that is that he wants to look at the shield technology mm-hmm. because the this is the Hatak that had captured Thor um in the last episode of season five. And he has a good point about this ship had superior shielding, so we should probably take a look at it. Mm-hmm. But when he tells that to Jack, Jack's just like, never mind. We don't need to bother with it. <laughs> Stay on mission, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But as an IT person, I do I do appreciate that that attitude because I don't want to just go look at it and see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but the uh, first things first and, you know, fixing the finding the computer core or whatever True. was was the, was the priority. And then he has uh, meets his untimely end at the hand or sword of the ninja Jaffa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is, uh, I think they bring that back on, on uh, their their dark matter show a little bit, but I, I seem to recall there being ninjas and and stuff on that as well. But yeah, I don't know that it really works, but I guess it's better than having another like, you know, th- like three bouncers from the Vancouver bar scene or something when you turn the corner. It was just see them it sitting in a room odd. going. Yeah. Yeah. How, how do we show ni- no life signs, but then they're there? So, yeah. yeah. They're really good at holding their breath. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's, I thought they were going to do more with them, but they just kind of come in, they kill the guy, they cause all the problems, and then they're gone. Like, yeah. So, what's, what's going on with that? And at first, well, I thought that, like, it was going to be, these guys are actually rebels and we're going to team up with them after this misunderstanding or something like that, but they don't really do that. And it, <laughs> it just felt very, it felt out of place. You get like the, the very stereotypical like flute music and you got the, the guy standing there with his katana sword and it was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and the implication is that they got triples added or something, right? I mean, we didn't see yeah. it happen, but they're mm-hmm. not going to keep them on the, the ship just unconscious, right? And, and they wouldn't so, take yeah. up a lot of space for that, you know. That's true. Know. Yeah. So we don't <laughs> see him after that. So the implication is that Teal'c's just like, eh, hit a couple more times with the hat to make him disappear. <laughs> yeah. And it's, we've never seen this like a ninja Jaffa before. So it's, they're just I, now coming out of the woodwork, I guess. I, I guess they were in um, redemption a little bit or or something like in the background but of one scene, but I yeah. don't recall it. I, I can't recall if, I, if we see them uh-huh. again or if they I, just made such an impression in this one that. I read that they they were okay. in another episode in a scene, but I don't remember. Yeah. 
They are. They have their own uh, entry on Stargate Wiki. The the Ninja Jaffa. Apparently, they're a special class of Jaffa among Anubis's force. And they're his like special guard. Um, uh, they oh, appear okay. in three other episodes. It looks like. Oh boy! Gotta watch for yeah, them now. Full, full circle. Full circle. Yeah. Yeah, Fallen and, <laughs> and Homecoming. Yeah. Okay. So there we Exciting. go. I feel like you're. This is getting into like a age yeah. of empires territory. You got your different <laughs> yeah. classes you got to build. You have your Gandhi so. Jaffa with the nuclear weapons and <laughs> Gandhi Jaffa is a good band name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It would be. laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, I feel like this is, it, there's a lot more energy I feel like in these episodes and there has been for a while, like it feels like they're, they're doing something new. We get a new character to see, th- like kind of see through his eyes, everything that's going on. And I think his dynamic works really well with the team, especially, uh, especially with Teal. So I'm excited to yeah. see where, where the mm-hmm. Teal Jonas relationship goes. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is really good. Um, but yeah, I did. I do appreciate how basically Jack tells tells Jonas to to wait in the car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's his, his first mission out, and he's got to got to sit on the little shuttle with uh, Jacob. Yeah, or Teal. Yeah, no, it's Teal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is like question. Like, why wouldn't you take Teal? Though, I mean, on, right. it's a it's a gold mothership, but it you know it gives us some good moments. So I'm not really I, objecting to that too much. I guess how many people can pilot the. Oh, that's true. Little yeah. Peltac or so, whatever, the Tic Tac or whatever. Peltac, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I did think it's kind of, it's kind of funny because uh, with Sam and Jacob, because that's her dad, obviously, their dynamic, she just, yeah. calls, him, she just calls him dad all the time. It's yeah. like, <laughs> even in this kind of official mission, like there's no more formality there. I guess I guess that's fine, but. I don't know. I'd feel awkward if I was on a mission and my dad was there. It'd be weird. Yeah. And your dad was also like sharing his body with an alien <laughs> symbiote. Yeah. But I do like, he's like, now be careful, Sam. And she's like, yes, dad. You know? yeah. yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think we hear uh, his symbiote at all. No, we don't. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So to save on, save on voice effects and, it just makes his character better. I feel like it's always awkward when it's the, with the uh, Gould who's speaking rather than him. Yeah, going back and forth. And so. I love his and um, uh, Jack's little banter and yeah. you know back and forth. Like before you go slapping an Air Force sticker on it. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I hate to see my favorite planet get blown up. Yeah, which planet yeah. is that? Because <laughs> he's a. Uh, Jack's still a little standoffish when it comes to the Tokra. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Understandably. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not without reason or cause. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we get another uh, military cover up because this massive oh, yeah. ship crashes into the ocean and they have to say that it was a, a meteor that was tracked by NORAD. So get more of that. Although I feel like at this point, probably every major nation probably knows what's going on. I think this exact incident is one that's called back in the mm-hmm. disclosure episode. I'm not sure, but I, I think, think it's too. Yeah. It's a weather balloon. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if, if you've been following the news recently, <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like the twist on Thor in this episode. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A computer virus, computer virus. Wait, hold on. Maybe it's actually Thor. And that was, that was a nice. A nice yeah. way to get out of it. Right. And that's also a good way to bring him back. And so I actually didn't look this up yet, but I'm assuming that it was Michael Shanks doing the voice and they were just using some clipped audio from the previous episode. I'm actually yeah. yeah. They yeah. even they even say, oh, he's saying that thing that he said in that other episode. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't think that we see Thor the rest of the season, do we? Because of Michael oh. Shanks being gone. I think we no, get I other. Think, yeah, we get Loki. I think at some point, um, although that might be next season. But I think that's next. Yeah, we get other other uh, Asgard. Nice. Yeah, 
I did. I did like the uh, Jack's Dick had a very funny line where you know they're on the ship. There's nobody on board, and Jacob I think suggests, well, it could be a Trojan horse, and mm-hmm. Jack says, well, then they're doing it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But then the actual virus is a Trojan horse uh, type of virus um, until they discover that it's actually like an AI type thing. So, yeah. Anubis is the kind of guy who'd probably forget to update malware bytes. So, yeah. <laughs> you probably wouldn't think he needed it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. So, I like how they talk about how this is a. Uh, Yet another opportunity where they have this massive ghoul mothership. It's just a (laughs) wealth of technology and intelligence and they got to blow it up again. And Jack says, well, we'll we'll keep the next one. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I like that. They don't let them hang on to it because you know, it might get boring. They might advance too quickly. It keeps it, keeps it fresh and interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I I do like, Jacob's rationale. It's like, you know, basically there's nothing we can salvage of the ship anyways. Um, you know, and it might be good to have the Supreme commander of the Asgard owe you a favor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that does. It's always good to have that in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. Did y'all spot Peter DeLuise? Oh (laughs) yes. Uh, there's a fun, a fun piece of trivia with that. Uh, so he plays, uh, Lieutenant, uh, he plays, uh, Dagwood on Sequest. And so his character's name in this is Lieutenant Dagwood. So it was a reference back to Sequest, which takes place in the ocean too. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> and he pops out of a submarine, right? So yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Which is Sequest. Sequest is one of those shows I want to go back and watch because I watched a few episodes when it was originally airing. And I've read some stuff around the production that makes it sound like it'd be interesting to, to go back and see, but it's just very hard to find. It used to be on like Pluto TV or something like that, yeah. one of those free services. Yeah, that's a that's a fun '90s uh, sci-fi show. So we get we get Jonas comes to the rescue. Uh, he has to unlock the the water chamber uh, as the ship is filling up, so Sam and Jack don't uh, drown. And I was thinking uh, there wasn't any. So I was thinking there'd be some sort of like maybe romantic moment between Jack and Sam as they think they're going to die, but you don't really get any of that. So there's no fuel for the shippers there. No, it's been ship free season so far. Yeah. yeah. Sam's still getting over Daniel's death or ascension. That or she's like hot for Rodney. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. She did mention uh, she found him more attractive when she hated him. So Right. right. Yep. There you go. But no, the the underwater, the the stuff that they filmed in the Mm -hmm. in the pool is is very good because um yeah, usually you don't see like directors and writers completely submerging their cast. Mm Mm-hmm. I think we see it's not quite we don't quite see this as much, but it they do something similar in the one of the Stargate movies continuum, I think, with some with some water stuff. But no, so yeah, and I read online that they had the set and instead of raising the water level, they just lowered the set into the pool to make it look like the water level was going up. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Wa- water scenes always add a whole nother level of complexity because you got to film underwater. You got to make sure your equipment's working and all that stuff. Uh, makes me think of uh, the Abyss, which apparently was yeah. an insanely hard movie to film. Mm-hmm. I love that movie. Yeah, and you need safety divers standing by with mm-hmm. oxygen and and everything. And yeah, I mean, for a TV show, they did a really good job making it look cinematic. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, Jonas. It looked like Jonas had kicked off his shoes and he was swimming around, so it was mm-hmm. just barefoot for the rest of the time, I guess. <laughs> I mean, that's what they tell you yeah. to do, and if you get stuck in water, you're supposed to take your shoes off because they just hold you down, especially if they're those yeah. like military boots. Yeah, they yeah. showed him taking those off and and getting ready and doing his breathing exercises and stuff. So that was all like you know, obviously he's had some on Kalana. He had some, or in Kalana, he had some pretty good uh, uh, training there. I'm figuring that he probably went through some sort of like Air Force basic training before they oh, signed yeah, off probably on yeah on sg1 so <laughs> you would think yeah it's like the beginning of spies <laughs> like us or something it's like, this is the radical descent <laughs> test or something yeah, yeah. but uh, I, uh, as an actor I mean, i'm not an actor but if i were yeah. an actor i don't that is that is a i don't think i could film that yeah i don't think i'm claustrophobic but that that would kind of freak me out to be 
you know, I'm sure it's open on the sides and the front and whatever, but it just looks so trapped. Well, and he had his eyes open, which is something I can't do underwater. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Sam and Jack are just watching it, and you know, yeah. and then oh, and then and then uh, Jacob has to say goodbye. I'm sorry. Yeah, like I'm it's sorry. His, it's his yeah. daughter. That's. I mean, that was. I mean, that was pretty emotional. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was a good scene. He did a good job conveying that. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder. Uh, it's always interesting to read about productions that use a lot of water because it's just so many things can go wrong. Although I assume with something like this, you're just dealing with like an indoor pool. It's not a full setup. It's probably a lot safer. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like the five, like if they're, if those are like plywood sets, like I don't yeah. know what the mothership set is mm. made out of, but like, I don't know how long you could really submerge it before it started to get soggy and like, gross and then you the water was so clear like eventually like you're gonna get like chunks of like paint and stuff in the water so it was yeah they did a really good job with with the water um underwater photography in this one yeah i think well and this episode was nominated for best visual effects for the gemini awards so Mm. i don't know if it was specifically the water stuff or the the other but i i gotta think that the water probably played a part in that yeah yeah Probably that. Wasn't, and then. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it wasn't for the CGI submarine, but you only <laughs> see that for a second. But oh yeah, <laughs> this was this was years after Hunt for Red October, so oh yeah, yeah. yeah this they get around a, that again on continuum on continuum by using a real submarine. So mm-hmm. that or uh, just use stock footage. Yeah, <laughs> I was watching some movie. I can't remember what it was, but they used the footage from Hunt for Red October for the submarine. Oh, wow. For the submarine scenes. I was probably from the same studio. I was like, this is very familiar because this is just Hunt for Red October. <laughs> wasn't and, uh, Down Periscope, was it? With it was Kelsey some... Kramer? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was some other movie that was not very good. And so when you have the Hunt for Red October scenes dropped in there, it uh, it's, it's noticeable. Yeah. Cause you're like, this is a much worse movie. And that submarine, it didn't look, it, it looked like a sci-fi kind of submarine. I don't think it was yeah. a real, I mean, maybe they have, I'm not a submarine expert, so it could be completely wrong, but it didn't look like a real submarine aside from the CGI. Well, to get from Pearl Harbor to like off the coast of Alaska or wherever they were, like in an hour, or <laughs> it had to probably be a sci-fi submarine to move that fast. <laughs> it uses the, uh, the the Star Trek speed of plot warp drive. Yeah, the spork drive or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said spork drive, which would have been more drive, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's the secret to warp 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get a. So now they have two death gliders, though. They didn't get to keep the head talk, but they got the death oh, gliders. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Add that to the collection. Yeah, and definitely. Nice. Assume that'll help with the development of the X three O. Was it three O three? Three O three O three O two is the yeah. is their uh, hyperspace fighter. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we got more stuff for that. Maybe yeah. these death gliders are what uh, that UFO whistleblower who just came out is talking about. <laughs> it would have to be right. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we'll see what happens with that by the. Who knows, by the time this airs in 11 days or whatever, it'll be, uh, w- w- the truth will be out there. I want to believe, but that's yeah. a different show. So, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess if we did end up with some sort of, if the government actually does have some sort of secret program for retrieving alien spacecraft, it would basically be a combination of the X-Files and Stargate. Yeah, yeah, it would. Um so. I'm trying to, th- <laughs> yeah, we're just like the the warehouse at the end of uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? <laughs> Stuff stacked oh, up yeah. in boxes, yeah. But having done some projects in my professional life that involve being in military warehouses, that one in Raiders of the Lost Ark is a lot more organized. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> One thing I did like about this episode from a story perspective is that, you know, the whole thing is, is Jonas is confiding in Teal'c that he 
you know, when when he he could have saved, you know, or he could have taken Daniel Jackson's place, but you know, when it came time to jump over the table and disarm mm-hmm. the the device, he he froze up. And then again, when um, you know, he was just standing there and the rings activate and it's the mm-hmm. ninja Jaffa, he just freeze, freezes up or is just staring in, in disbelief and Teal has to like pull him out of the way. Z- zat everybody and then and then Jonas like comes back around the corner. And it's funny to me. And then at the end of the episode, he's like, Teal's like, well, when you, when you need to be brave, you will be brave. And then that's how you know you are brave. And then um, he saves the day and is brave at the end. But what I do like about that scene is where he's like, he's like panicking and then coming back around startled and stuff. That's the actual scene of him that they use in the opening credits. Two <laughs> oh, like yeah. hero shot and stuff. <laughs> nice. Because I mean, they didn't have a lot to work with because now we've gone sure. from just the Stargate to like the Stargate with clips of people kind of framed right. by the, the Stargate. So but yeah, I thought that thought that was kind of funny. But then, so he does have his moment to kind of realize that, you know, he he can be brave in the moment and and do the, the right thing, right? Because that's his whole his whole turnaround as he goes yep. and does the scary thing and jumps in the water and saves him. So, I like that he isn't just automatically good at good at that though because. Mm-hmm. He's not from a military background, whereas yeah. the rest of the team all is, and so it's nice to see that. Um, I feel like you don't really get that a lot with stuff like shows like this. Everyone's just automatically good at what they're doing. Yeah. And so it's nice to have him have that character arc where he's a scientist who's worked in a lab most of his life and he's not going to automatically know how to do the dangerous action hero things. And when you're put in dangerous situations for the first time, you're probably going to freeze up. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And not just that, but he comes in and even though he's got this encyclopedic knowledge and been a scientist, he's not just running around saving the day. He's not the one on the computer doing all the things, you know, right. he is taking that back seat and he's doubting and he's questioning. And so it is kind of nice to see a character come in and not, like you said, be excellent at everything. And right. Amazing. And you get that, get that payoff at the end where, uh, when they, when they're radioing in after they're escaped in the death gliders, uh, Jack says that they have all members of SG one present yeah. accounted for. Mm-hmm. So that's his validation from Jack who throughout the episode has been telling him he's got to prove himself. So right. that, that was really well done. I liked how they handled his character arc. Mm-hmm. And that Jonas knew that Jack put him on the team because he didn't want to rush him. Yeah. Like we, yeah. we, we do get that, that he knows, he knows that he, he wasn't really wanted. So, yeah. And then I, in that last scene, I like, he says, are you smiling? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> First time in yep. a death glider. Yeah. <laughs> and Jack starts what? hot dogging. Yeah. 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 Do that a was barrel nice. roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, so I think we have some, uh, some fun foreign language, uh, Titles yes. for this episode, Victor. <laughs> yeah. But before we did that, I just wanted to comment that major Davis is awesome with audacity. Like he's there with his little audio editor, like de- oh, yeah. deciphering <laughs> Thor's secret message. So that's a hidden talent. Maybe he's a podcast editor too. There you go. Um, but if so you have I, trouble, I you can. Yeah, probably get on that was Twitter and over. find him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, one other thing that I forgot to mention was uh, I love that scene when Jonas comes in through the rings when he's underwater after he activates yes. it, and yeah. then it it does the beam up thing, and then it comes down. It's just got like that cylinder of water, and then it just splashes all over the place it's nice to see you get environmental effects with a teleportation system because usually for budgetary reasons they're not going to do that so that Mm -hmm. that was really cool yeah they're doing a little showing off yeah yeah you could tell they were uh, bumping the 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 light or whatever the the phrase is for that yeah and i mean it it was a lot would have been a lot easier to not do that like on star trek whenever they beam someone out of water and then they're just like standing on the teleporter pad like perfectly dry or something but yeah but yeah no i did i I like that one a lot that's one of the images from this episode that really stands out in my mind when i'm watching i was like oh this is the one where they beam up the (laughs) water (laughs) yeah also tells you gives you a little bit of insight as to how the system works it's not just targeting whatever biological material is there so and that's what i really Mm -hmm. like about stargate especially as we come into like the fifth sixth seventh seasons is and this is why it's such a great show for me and why people like it so much is because they've thought about how things work in the universe like how the actual devices work Mm -hmm. and they they 
work consistently and they show the audience, you know, them working and they work like you would expect them to, um, for the most part. So. Awesome. Yeah. So we have the, uh, the alternate language titles. Yes, we do. We actually, in, in, in French, this is called a reunion. Hmm. Yeah. Re- reunion hmm. or something. Um, I don't know why. And, uh, in Italian, conto alla rovesia, which is countdown. So that could refer to the, the, uh, you know, the self-destruct timer counting down. Yeah. And then in German, we get notlandung, which is emergency landing. <laughs> so the one, the one thing they don't show us in the episode <laughs> is them actually splashing yeah. down. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's what they go for. Yeah. That's funny. But. I'm surprised it's not just called Jonas Quinn saves the day or something yeah. like that. <laughs> Water is wet or something. <laughs> <laughs> Jonas is scared and then he is <laughs> not. Yes. What's the German equivalent of red bad red badge of courage? I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, all quiet on the Western, <laughs> Western front. Western <laughs> front or something. <laughs> awesome. Do y'all have any other uh, thoughts on this episode? I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good one. It's a a good one. So it's, it's, yeah. Looking forward to uh, the next, the next few episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some really good, like memorable episodes coming up. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about the next episode because it's a, it's a Disney musical. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Olaf CGI looks a little iffy just given how early it is, but he really adds to the, to the team on, the, right. yes. on their mission. Can't wait for the musical numbers. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jack singing, uh, <laughs> let it go is just, it's, yeah. it's amazing. It's wins an award. Yeah. yeah. Let it shrink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, that was this episode. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Before we go, uh, we'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secrets of Stargate, including Nicholas D., Richard M., Adam G., Nicholas O., and Logan K. Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of Stargate and all the shows at StarQuest. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. And be sure to follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or on the SQPN YouTube channel. And to find previous episodes of Secrets of Stargate and to send feedback, please visit sqpn.com slash Stargate. And you can email us at stargate at sqpn.com or follow StarQuest on social media at facebook.com slash starquestmedia and on Twitter at sqpn. You can also check out the sqpn Discord at sqpn.com slash discord we have a fun uh, stargate channel over there so come on and join us and we'll be back next time when we'll be talking about the next episode of sg1 frozen until then uh, lisa jones thank you for joining us and sharing the secret to stargate thanks jack and victor land thank you as well thanks jack and it would be nice to keep our nice new mothership more than a couple of hours <laughs> it's always how it goes yeah Once again, I'm Jack Berezini. Thank you for listening to The Secrets of Stargate on StarQuest. Anyway, I'm sorry, but that just happens to be how I feel about it. What do you think?